Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to yet another rig video. This one is, I wouldn't call it a long time coming, but this was kind of like a spur of the moment thing that I really wanted to try out. And for all intents and purposes, I'm actually quite happy with how it turned out. So as you guys saw maybe last month with my sim rig video, it was basically the GT track from Next Level Racing. As much as I enjoy it, I still do. The problem that it has is cable management. And the amount of times I wanted to move the rig out to go adjust something, whether it be the pedals or the screen or, or like a new spot where the webcam would go, there's just a mess of cables everywhere. And it really started to get to me. And then I finally decided that I'm going to do something about it. So this idea that I had was kind of multifaceted, where the main inspiration was seeing sim rigs at like expos, whether it be at racetracks or whatever, where it's these all inclusive boxes, which ironically kind of look like the arcade cabinets you know, from the good old days where you put the quarter in the slot machine type thing. So the other big place of inspiration was seeing the Gran Turismo World Series and essentially, again, these arcade cabinets. And I'm like, okay, it's go time. I now need to make this a reality. I had so many ideas going on. I didn't want to buy a new rig. I just wanted to take these pieces of plywood, cut them to the size of the rig, and then make like this big walled cabinet space where I could then hang a camera on the back side of the monitor and then not have all these weird cables and all these weird things in the way of the camera shot of the foot cam, but everything was just enclosed. So August 10th, I had taken the rig apart. I had gotten the single monitor stand and the GT track away from one another. And then I realized that with not too much modification, you can drill holes in the GT track, use the little triangular plates from the single monitor stand, use the same screws, screw it in, and then use the single monitor stand upright to, tra to attach to the triangular plates. And then you'd have to drill new holes a little bit more inset on the monitor arm. And unfortunately, you're not able to use the secondary support as it's now too short. But with it being attached to the GT track now and having that cross beam for the monitor to sit on is more than enough stability to be able to keep everything together. So I used that for about a week and honestly, it went pretty fine. No, no issues at all about that. But then that next Saturday, a week later, it was go time. So I went to my local hardware store, got a circular saw that I never used, a hand saw, some plywood, paint, you name it, I bought it all. And what we started out with was getting the pieces of plywood loosely cut to the rake. Now this was the first problem that I had was I didn't want to take the rake apart any further than it already was. So I very crudely used cardboard made templates, drilled kind of holes where I believed that the spots would be where I could put the plywood against the rig, and then used the handsaw and cut all of those pieces down to size. Now that everything was cut down to size, the interesting part was figuring out where everything was going to be potentially mounted. So with these pieces of plywood, I would have to get either new screws or something to be able to get these plywood to attach to the actual rig itself because otherwise they weren't doing anything they're just kind of sitting there and the biggest issue that i have is the bottom piece and the bottom piece where all the wiring was going to be stored and the playstation was going to be stored and all of that was too thick for the casters the casters thread was not long enough to go through the bottom board and the rig. So I had to do, I'd get some couplings and then some additional thread that I cut down to size. And it's, they, they look horrible. They weren't the right size. I do, do a lot of reefing to get them all to fit. But now that I got it all together, 
I got all the pieces of plywood painted and got the bottom board attached and then got the casters screwed into place and then got some tie wrap and zip ties and tied it all together. It kind of worked. So we got everything all painted up, looks great. And this is where the next part becomes an issue. So it's plywood. So as I cut, little pieces of layer would fall off, which is fine. I'm not worried about professionalism here. I just want this done. But then the interesting part was, like I said before, with the mounting, I would drill the holes for the screws. I would try to attach the screws to put this rig back together with these pieces of plywood now attached. And again, threads were too short. So what I'd have to do is take a hammer, hammer it so far in that it would split the wood around that area. Then I would be able to finally catch the thread and be able to screw it all together. And weirdly enough, it kind of worked because the, the actual screw head is now flush with the wood, but it made this wood like kind of split. And that was an issue because it happened with every single screw everywhere on the rig. And that was annoying because I had to do that like 30 times. It was horrifying. After hours of killing my hands and my wrists, getting everything put together, I then used some nails and some screws and got the remaining uprights put together and got those screwed into the side of the monitor uprights, got the little top plate down, and then finally it starts to look like a cabinet. And at this point I'm sitting there going, this is cool. Apart from the fact that getting it to the garage was a struggle, but now the monitor arm stuck out too wide, so I had to dismantle that and then put that all back together. Which, funny enough, if I do decide to upgrade to a triple monitor setup eventually, I can still do that with this little monitor arm because it's still got the little pins in the sides where you're able to attach the uh, other monitor arms. So it's, it's a possibility whether I do that or not, we'll figure that out later. This was a lot of trial and error where I wanted, first of all, the power supply. I realized that the cutout holes that I made were not big enough, so I had to, in a clean room, use a saw to be able to you know, file away the extra excess to be able to get the actual power supply into it. It was gross and I had to vacuum it up. But anyway, finally got it to fit. And then on the bottom underneath the seat, that's where the power supply went. On the other side is where all my ports were, the HDMI, USB, all that fun stuff is going to be. So I got all that set up and then realized that the PlayStation, I wanted the vent to be pointed out the back, it was too wide. So unfortunately, the vent had to be pointed down the side. I'm very concerned about heating and overheating and all of that kind of fun stuff. Turns out that the chair almost only got a couple of spots where it's attached to the rig and the rest of it is open aired. So hopefully enough air comes out the side. Again, we're doing a lot of hoping here. <laughs> so after hours of wiring all of this together we have something and one of the other things i wanted to just guess as well is i actually figured out a really good system for the foot cam for i've been using it for now years and now figuring it out that i can attach it to the back side of the monitor that was great but then i needed a light so i've got a couple of usb devices that are being run through so like HDMI duplicators, those are down in here. Um, those are running USB. So that I decided, hey, you might as well get like a USB desk lamp so I can be able to adjust the light in like the foot cam area. Great decision and it's now illuminated. It works great. And I should also discuss too with all of this wiring. Like I was kind of earlier referring to, um, the PlayStation runs to the TV through an HDMI duplicator, and then the other HDMI out goes out the side. So if you plug this into the wall, it just all works. Yes, you're not gonna have the little monitors 
or the face cam or the foot cam or any of that. That will be for like when you plug it into the video mixer, but it all just works, which I am super happy with how the wiring looks like a rat's nest, but it's actually really, I'm not going to say really well thought out. <laughs> if I had more HDMI cables and had more varied length, I wouldn't have so many weird cables that are being tied around to one another. And eventually I went back and cleaned it up a little bit. The left, the left side looks great. The right side cable management, I have lots to do because of the shifter and all that fun stuff. That's that skill. Still got to do some work. And you guys are going to think I'm really dumb for doing this, but the only reason why it's like way back over here, you might be able to see it, is right there in the iPhone camera is where I do the heart rate monitor. So I run a workout on my watch and I have the fitness app open on my phone and records the heart rate details. I'm able to crop it and then use it in post. And I think it always, it, it just adds a little extra touch. I don't know what, how else to describe it. It just adds something. It's kind of cool. So yeah, and like I said, now we've got everything all put together, everything all wired up. And then we went to do our first Tuesday race and the camera wasn't in the right spot. The foot cam had this weird cable issue where it was acting very intermittent. And I had to just hardware it to the video mixer and I was worried more about that than I was the race itself and finally after spending another hour after the race now we're finally done and it looks fantastic it really does so like I said all the HDMI cables and all that kind of fun stuff I can pull out the side I can just move the rig back and everything's all tied together and it's good to go it's all portable so i've also loosely had this idea for a while just because not only did i see the gt world series one day with a different rig i would like to make four duplicate copies of this idea where it's the playstation and the foot cam and all the cables coming out the side and all that kind of fun stuff and be able to do like a four person live stream and have like a more professional setup. And that will be the day that you'll notice I won a million dollars or something. But this is a good proof of concept to see if I can kind of make this work. Again, I'll have a different rig setup at some point that I'll use as a template instead of the GT track. It was the GT track was fine again. The screw threads were too short to really work well with the plywood. Um, but yeah, it's it looks great to me. Yes, it's got some touch-up work that it needs to be done. Yes, there are some points that like I didn't measure very well, so there were some gaps, and it just I'll gloss over that. If I put like veneer over the edge of everything, you won't notice a damn thing. Honestly, you won't notice a damn thing anyway because the camera's not pointed that way, so fair enough. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I finally felt kind of like my dad, where he was always working on carpentry product projects at our old house growing up and that kind of stuff. And I've never been, I've been okayish with tools, but it was just nice to be able to finally kind of do it on my own, figure it out as I go, and say, you know, at the end of the day, I made this and I'm happy with how it turned out and this will last me a while it really will I think this will go a long way and I just love the look of everything it, it's just it's just super cool <laughs> so yeah I know two rig videos in a month or thereabouts but I had some pretty drastic changes here that's why I wasn't racing last Sunday and that's why we didn't have that last Tuesday videos during half those races the rig was in multiple pieces I'm like I'm not I'm not going to be able to record a video out of this sorry <laughs> um, this is still potentially a work in pro progress I would honestly like the face cam a lot lower. I like it down next to the rig if I can somewhere. Um, I'm gonna have to find some way to do it though because then I'm gonna lose out the monitor down there. And eh, I don't know. 
I'll figure something out. But yeah, uh, let me know down in the comments if you guys have enjoyed uh, watching this kind of weird build that I've made. If you guys have had similar ideas, if you guys have done anything similar, or if you are now inspired to do something similar, making those old style kind of retro arcade cabinets for your sim rig, as it is, like I said, it's really nice to just hide all those cables away and just... Now I can just look at the room and not feel so anxious about all the cables that are just lying around everywhere. <laughs> now I can just kind of look behind the rig and unplug what I need to unplug and plug it back in and we're good to go. So, again, let me know in, your, in the comment section down below if you guys um, are working on your own projects or if you enjoyed this, if you didn't enjoy this. Again, let me know everything you got down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will finally stop making rig videos for at least a year. God, I hope so. <laughs> so again, thanks so much for uh, following uh, my little journey of this little project that I made. A lot of money, a lot of time. So thankful that I'm done. But again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.